the day our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Every year for Memorial Day, we gather in one sacred space or another, in first or in second, to honor and celebrate and remember the lives of those lost, serving our country, protecting our freedom. This year, Pastor Andrew and I gather in a different sacred space. This one made holy, made holy by small family gatherings, saying goodbye to their loved ones. This one made holy <laughs> by children, scouts running around placing white flowers. This one made holy with soldiers playing tennis. This one made holy with our community gathering year after year after year. This one made holy by our God, ever and always making everything holy. And so we gather here, and I am grateful that you are welcoming us into a holy space in your places right now. A holy space in your home, a holy space in your week, in your day, in the, in the chaos that is your life or in the quiet that is your life these days. This, this is the day our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, it's an honor to be here um, in this space with Pastor Laura of Second Church and myself here. Um, we give praise to the Lord for his grace uh, it's the solidarity of the two churches in town also. Um, last year was with all of you at Second Church, and some of you may remember I lost my basketball and I got a number of basketballs <laughs> that week from that message, and so we, we share humor and joy and the love of the Lord. And um, so we do come here uh, in this space. This is a season in our world of mourning on many levels. Um, obviously for Memorial Day, remember, remembering those who paid the ultimate price with their lives for our freedom and our nation. And also remembering those right now that are um, caring for those with the virus, that are um, bringing his love and grace in these difficult times. So we, we remember that. And um, I've made me think uh, from John 15 where Jesus says to his disciples, um, I have told you this, that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater has no love than this to lay one's life down for one's friends. And so we just um, praise the Lord for him laying his life down for us. And uh, we just hope that you know as a town and as the churches that are representing this town um, that... Um, we're going to continue to be there for each other and that this service that we're going to have today will be a service of worship and praise to our God. So let me open us up in a word of prayer and have Pastor Laura close us. Lord, I praise you for this beautiful day. Indeed, Lord, um, this is the day that you have made. We rejoice and are glad in it, even in a time of great suffering, turmoil, and tears. Lord, we pray for our nation right now. Pray for those who are caring for those in this pandemic, those who are sick. Um, and um, we also thank you, Lord, for um, those who fought for our country, for our freedoms, laid their lives down so we may live free. But what a picture of the gospel, Lord, that you laid your life down for us so that we can live the abundant life, the resurrected life. I pray for Second Church today. Bless them, Lord. Lead Pastor Laura and... Um, this church, Lord, in your way, and I pray the same for First Church, and Lord, we pray that we can just uh, be here for this community, for this town, um, in these difficult days, so Lord, we just um, praise you this Memorial Day for your grace and your love. When I add to those words, God, words of thanksgiving for our promise for unity that we are committed to. I give you thanks for
for uh, the faces I have carried around of those at First Church, those beloved folks I am so used to meeting this time of year, for the joyful faces as they gather over ice cream, for the tearful uh, faces sitting in the pews, for the hearts and hands uh, for the ministry that is done when we gather and when we are apart. And in this season where we are apart and yet still gathering, we give you thanks and praise for that unity that bonds us together one to another. In the name of Jesus our Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.
talk to you about remembering, about remembering people. Now, I love to collect rocks, and many of the rocks that I have remind me of special people. I have one here that's perfectly round and smooth. This one reminds me of Tom Perkins. He was a custodian at a school where I worked. And my class was studying rocks, and Tom knew that, and he wanted to bring in some special rocks for us to look at. He brought in his whole collection, but he left some rocks just like this. These are the smoothest rocks. And when I look at this rock, I think of Tom. Now this rock, this one is kind of a shiny rock. And this one helps me remember Helen Wallace. Helen used to play the organ at our church, and she brought me this one from Tennessee. It helps me remember that Helen played beautiful music for our church. Now, 
this big one, I kind of call it like an Oreo cookie. This big one is from Vermont. It's from Middlebury, Vermont. And my son-in-law went to school there. And when I look at this rock, it helps me to remember Scott, who is a really kind son-in-law. Now, tomorrow is a very special day. It's called Memorial Day. Now, I don't know if you can see this picture right here. Well, tomorrow is a special day that we set aside to remember people such as soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen who gave their lives for our country. I found this flag right next to a gravestone when I was out walking this week. This is the gravestone for Captain William Purley, who lived over 200 years ago. And he fought in the Revolutionary War. So on Memorial Day, tomorrow is a day that we remember people <clears throat> who fought to save uh, our country, who fought to keep our country free. But, you know, as I remember people who were kind, people who fought to save our country, I remember somebody who is very special. And this is what reminds me. It's the Bible. Because Jesus is the most important person to remember. He loves you, he loves me, and he loves everybody in the world. John 3.16 says, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son. God gave his son that whoever believes in him may not be lost, but have eternal life. So my Bible is something that helps me remember who Jesus is and how much he loves me. And whenever I read it, it helps me remember about Jesus and his love for me. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that you do for us and have given us. Thank you for all our friends that we remember. Thank you for all those soldiers who have fought to keep our country safe. But thank you most of all for Jesus, who died for us so that we could have eternal life with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
please join me in saying this generosity liturgy together. We do this to make our hearts more like our Father's, who is abundantly generous. Heavenly Father, there is nothing I have that you have not given me. All I have and all that I am belong to you, but with the blood of Jesus. To spend everything on myself and to give without sacrifice is the way of the world that you cannot abide. But generosity is the way of those who call Christ their Lord, who love him with free hearts and serve him with renewed minds, who withstand the delusion of riches that chokes the word, whose hearts are in your kingdom and not in the systems of the world. I am determined to increase in generosity until it can be said that there is no needy person among us. I am determined to be trustworthy with such a little thing as money that you may trust me with true riches. Above all, I am determined to be generous because you, Father, are generous. It is the delight of your daughters and sons to share your traits and to show what you are like to all the world. Amen. Hi, my name is Mark Williamson. And I'm Trudy Williamson. And we want to thank you for allowing us a bit of time today to tell you about our journey and how we came to First Church and to Boxford here at our farm, um, Stillwater Farm. Um, it's also a special day for us. Um, it happens to be our 32nd wedding anniversary. And this is also a special time of year for us as we head into the Memorial Day weekend and we pause as a nation to remember the sacrifice of our military service members, first responders, and their families. To us, Memorial Day is a day of both celebration and sorrow as we honor the country's heroes and reflect on their sacrifice and service to our nation. Under normal circumstances, Trudy and I would be participating in the Gold Star Run this Memorial Day weekend, which is an annual road race held in Saugus in remembrance of our dear friend, Corporal Scott J. Procopio of the U.S. Marine Corps. On April 2nd, 2006, at the age of 20, Scotty was killed by a roadside IED while conducting combat operations in the Anbar province of Iraq during Operation Iraqi Freedom. For us, this was a very personal loss. We remembered Scotty as a little boy on his mother's knee. We remembered him catching frogs with his brothers at their family camp. And we remembered him as a young man learning how to unicycle around our neighborhood. And we were shocked that he was gone. The Savior himself tells us in John 15 that greater love has no one than this, that one laid down his life for his friends. And while we're so appreciative of what Scotty did for his country, affording us the freedom to live the way we do. We're so much more appreciative and thankful for the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus gave us on the cross. The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans 5 that when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. And in doing so, provided us a way to be freed from the bondage of sin and have an eternal relationship with God. As we think about our journey here to Boxford, it reminds me of how the Israelites had their journey through the wilderness. Um, and we think about some of the memorials of our past and our meeting at Gordon and our children and all of the things that, that led up to us um, being here. Um, and I think in relation to this period of time we're going through right now, um, I find that when events have happened, you know, in your recent past that you have seen God bring you through, you move forward with a confidence. Um, but sometimes when you reach uncertain times like we're in right now, 
you lose some of that confidence moving forward and I think that's a natural place to be um, and yet he hasn't changed and we can rest our assurance in him and knowing that he promises to be with us in all things. I think it was shortly after Scotty's passing that uh, God began to work in our hearts and bring certain things into our view and while we were both active in our church as Sunday school teachers and I was a participant in worship and Bible readings and gospel work. Most of this was done within our congregation and in the churches that we were affiliated with around the country. And I think even as an elementary teacher in Saugus, Trudy had wonderful relationships with the students and families. And yet sharing the gospel in a secular school is oftentimes difficult. And God began to work in our hearts with a calling to, to be a testimony together for him as a couple. Yeah and uh, a longing to be like Aquila and Priscilla, who every time we read about them in the New Testament, they're mentioned working together for God. Yeah, and we felt somewhat that lack of unity in um, the way we were trying to reach the people around us. So as Mark said, my testimony was primarily at school and, and to my neighbors and the families that I worked with. Um, and for him, it was mostly his colleagues and the people that he was working with. And we really felt a strong um, calling from God that we needed to be more unified and we needed to be reaching um, those people that we were rubbing shoulders with every day, you know, in our immediate surroundings, in our neighborhood. And we, we began to, you know, pray and explore what was that going to look like moving forward. Um, the church we were attending in Byfield was a very small congregation and while there was an exercise for the community, it wasn't our own community and we knew that, that God was leading us someplace, someplace else. <laughs> he certainly was and uh, this is the part where Trudy will remind me that in a moment of my weakness driving north on Route 95 and passing exit 52 that I actually turned to her and said, I, I don't, I really definitely don't want to live in Boxford. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> and uh, while that may be true, God does say in Isaiah 55 that my ways are, are not your ways. And in fact, we learned this lesson several times along the way. And I was thinking just particularly in the fact that we put offers on two other houses, one in Wenham and one in Topsfield and, and neither of those were accepted. So we, we believe God was answering our prayers by even closing doors. Yes. Um, and even our home here in Boxford um, didn't come to us the way you might normally approach a piece of property that you're looking for. Um, I had seen the home online. Um, we also wanted to bring our horses here um, as part of our outreach to the community. I wanted to have them with me at my home and um, I didn't think the property was large enough. We also had set some criteria. We didn't want an old house on a main street with a pool, which this <laughs> property has all three. So it was very shocking when one Sunday afternoon um, I was with some riding students and my phone began to buzz endlessly <laughs> endlessly and mark texted and said i found the house and sure enough he had <laughs> and it hasn't all been that easy god has tested us along the way as if checking to see if our faith was genuine and uh, i'm thinking about the fact that our house in saugus didn't sell for three more months and even the fact of having to spend the winter in an 1830s house is really an experience that uh, every one of us should have. But so many <laughs> things have happened since then that really have confirmed to us that this is his will. And I think we fondly remember the time that we went to the September Apple Festival yeah. in town prior to owning the house. And Trudy and I just wanted to get to know the town. Uh, coming from Saugus, this is just so different. And so we. We walked the streets and we ate at the country store and then we took a self-guided tour of First Church and uh, I'll never forget when I went up to the platform and looked behind the lectern there was a, a baseball bat and I remember saying to myself, wow, this is, this is my kind of church. And uh, on the way out we, we met a woman and I apologize, I, I don't remember who you were but if you're listening today please let us know because 
you were really so instrumental and so kind and so passionate about how wonderful the church was and the congregation and and when you know it as you were telling us about pastor andrew andrew walked by pushing julia in the stroller and um you know that was just god's timing god's timing and another event that was just etched on our hearts and here was someone we had never met before and within a few minutes uh, he was praying with us and uh, we just think that's another memorial stone that was placed on our journey and i remember walking back to the car with trudy and we were both crying that this is where god had led us and wanted us to be mm -hmm. fast forward a year and a half and we can say with full assurance we know that god has clearly led us on this journey um the church congregation has embraced us and i thank you all for that um when we went um new year's and we learned about what the mission statement was this year for the church and this passion to reach out to the community we just looked at each other that how did this happen that god has brought us to this place um that perfectly fit the calling we knew he had on our heart um, um think we're so thankful even for the wonderful neighbors that we have mm -hmm. and the opportunities that we've had to interact with the community through softball and some of your your horse friends and we couldn't be much happier yeah so thank you for taking these few minutes to let us tell you about our journey to Boxford and and how much you all mean to us and again thank you for reaching out and making us part of your first church community and may we God continue to bless you all yes absolutely Great. I will be reading from Nehemiah, chapter 4, verses 1 through 20. Now when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he mocked the Jews. He said in the presence of his associates and of the army of Samaria, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore things? Will they sacrifice? Will they finish it in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and burned ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him. And he said, That stone wall they are building, any fox going up on it would break it down. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their taunt back on their own heads and give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover their guilt, and do not let their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have hurled insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and the gaps were, were beginning to be closed, they were very angry and all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. So we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. But Jews
Still my soul.